Why did Jesus come from Judah and not another tribe? The Gospel of Matthew opens with a genealogy, the bloodline of Jesus traced back through history, from Joseph and Mary to King David, Judah and his brothers, the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac and Jacob concluding, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Wait, what? Judah and his brothers? You likely remember the famous Joseph from Sunday school. Oh. The favored son of Jacob who rose to power in Egypt after being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers. But who was Judah? Judah was Leah's fourth-born son from the unloved wife of Jacob. We read little about him. Yet all the gospel writers pay close attention to details showing Jesus descended from obscure Judah. You likely know Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah. But why was this specific tribe attached to the long-awaited Messiah? After all, Judah was not Jacob's firstborn, nor the most prominent son in Genesis. And his moral failures early on make his tribe seem like the most unlikely lineage for Christ. Yet against the odds, Jesus arose out of Judah. Overlooking elder brothers and more prominent sons, God planted Christ's origin within Judah's family tree. This begs the question, out of all of Jacob's 12 sons, why did the Messiah come specifically through the tribe of Judah? What made his line stand out as uniquely fit for the King of Kings? Judah's surprising prophetic blessings. As Jacob lay on his deathbed, he spoke prophetic blessings over each of his sons, including his fourth-born, Judah. At first glance, Judah seemed an unlikely candidate to carry the messianic lineage. However, listen to the shocking blessing Jacob pronounces. Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion and as a lioness. Who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him. And to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Genesis 49, verse 8 to 10. This powerful prophecy points clearly to a coming royal ruler from Judah's line who will one day defeat all enemies and reign over all nations. Jacob ties this coming king to the symbol of the lion and the tribe of Judah. This messianic imagery comes to fruition in Jesus Christ, the lion of Judah mentioned in Revelation 5, verse 5. Out of all Jacob's sons, the prophecy given to Judah establishes the foundation for the messianic lineage that will produce Jesus, the ultimate king of kings. From the very beginning, Scripture reveals that God selected Judah and his descendants to carry the line of Christ for many generations to come. The divine prophecy to Judah foreshadows the later prominence of David, Israel's model king arising from Judah, and it culminates in Jesus Christ, the eternal ruler and lion from Judah's tribe. Judah emerges as leader among brothers. Based on birth order, you would expect Judah's three older brothers, Reuben, Simeon and Levi, to assume tribal leadership and carry the messianic line. However, serious moral failures disqualified each one. As the firstborn, Reuben possessed the birthright and would naturally lead. However, Genesis reveals, while Israel lived in that land, Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. Genesis 35 verse 22. This act of defiling his father's bed through sexual immorality disqualified Reuben from leadership. Likewise, when their sister Dinah was sexually violated, Simeon and Levi responded in hot anger, deceiving all the town's men and killing every male to avenge her. Their rash and excessive violence elicited Jacob's strong rebuke. Their deadly rage rendered them unfit for messianic lineage. Set against his three elder brothers' disqualifications, Judah's positive trajectory stands out. Judah is far from perfect. In fact, we read of his own early moral mistakes, such as profiting from selling Joseph into slavery. However, Judah undergoes a powerful character change and redemptive arc. When the brothers travel to Egypt seeking food, Judah's integrity shines brightly in his offer to become a slave in Benjamin's place out of selfless love for his father, Jacob. 
This foreshadows Christ's later ultimate sacrifice. Whereas Reuben, Simeon and Levi demonstrated traits that barred them from leadership over the twelve tribes, Judah's growth into a leader with kingly qualities like self-sacrifice set the stage for his tribe to carry the messianic seed. Judah's lineage through David. The lineage of Jesus traces back to King David, Israel's model king and Judah's most famous descendant. God makes an unconditional covenant with David, promising, When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 2 Samuel 7 verse 12 to 13 God vows to establish David's throne and reign forever through his offspring. While David's earthly dynasty eventually ceases, the promise finds ultimate fulfillment in Jesus Christ, the eternal King who reigns forever from heaven and returns to establish his earthly kingdom. Because David hails from the tribe of Judah, this enduring promise of an everlasting King also extends to Judah. Once again, we see God singling out Judah and his lineage as integral to carrying the messianic seed. The promise God ties to David traces back to Judah, affirming that it is through Judah's tribe that the culminating messianic king, Jesus Christ, will arise to establish his eternal throne over all creation. No other tribe receives such an enduring promise of royal offspring culminating in divine eternal kingship. Divine contrast against disobedient Israel. After King Solomon dies, Israel splits into two rival kingdoms, North Israel and South Judah. As generation after generation of evil northern kings lead Israel into idolatry and disobedience, the lineage of leadership transfers to the southern tribe of Judah. While there is a mix of good and bad kings in both North and South, Judah retains the dynastic line culminating in Christ. When the Assyrians invade and exile apostate North Israel, erasing ten tribes from history, only Judah's line persists. Out of Jacob's twelve sons, Judah remained as a remnant, a small flame keeping alight the spark of divine leadership. As foretold in prophecy, the scepter of leadership rested in Judah's tribe. From this faithful remnant emerges the promised eternal king, Jesus Christ. Why Judah? In the divided sister kingdoms we see divine foresight and poetic justice. The disobedience of ten brothers leads to loss of historical identity. Yet little Judah persists through exile and succession of kings to eventually produce the Messiah. God exalts the small, marginalized tribe to become the head of all nations through Christ. The overlooked son preserves the lineage of history's greatest king. Again we see God orchestrating Jesus' origin from Judah. Judah's tribe models a faithful remnant preserving Messiah's light against the backdrop of national disobedience. From this slender bloodline shines the brilliance of Jesus Christ. In closing, why did Jesus descend from obscure Judah instead of a more prominent son of Jacob? Despite seeming an unlikely candidate, the messianic prophecies and promises tied to Judah made his tribe the channel for Christ's lineage against all odds. Judah received wondrous prophetic blessings, pointing to a coming royal lion-like ruler that found fulfillment in Christ. Judah developed into a self-sacrificial leader amongst his brothers. God extended the promise of an eternal throne, specifically through Judah's descendant David, and Judah's remnant persisted faithfully as other tribes vanished. While others disqualified themselves, little Judah became the vessel to carry the Messiah. Jesus Christ emerged as the Lion of Judah to rule the nations with a scepter that will never depart from his tribe. So we close where we opened, in Matthew's genealogy, that traces the surprising lineage of Jesus back to obscure Judah and his brothers. Yet now we understand why. Out of all his sons, God selected Judah's humble line to produce David's greater son and humanity's eternal king. Against all human logic, the Lord exalted humble Judah as the conduit for Christ's lifeblood. The overlooked son paved the way for the ultimate son and lion who came to save mankind. 
just as Scripture foretold, the Messiah arose from Judah's tribe. Friends, as we have traced Christ's lineage through Judah, we can draw great encouragement. For in Jesus we find the long-awaited Lion of Judah, majestic, victorious, mighty to save. Though Jesus came humbly, born in a manger to two impoverished Jews from a marginal territory, he conquers through self-sacrifice. By enduring the cross, then defeating death forever, Christ establishes an eternal throne over all creation. This king has roared. Every knee bows recognizing him as Lord. And the once obscure tribe of Judah gives birth to glory, royalty, and the blessings promised to all nations through the lion, Jesus. Beloved, if ever you feel marginalized, overlooked, or disqualified from being used significantly, remember Jesus and Judah. God specializes in lifting up the humble, unlikely and ill-equipped to accomplish the extraordinary through His grace. You may feel you come from an insignificant tribe, but the Lion of Judah empowers you with courage to shine for Him. Though the world rejects you, heaven honors you as it did Judah. So take heart. The might of our majestic Savior rests upon even the forgotten ones who place faith in the triumphant Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ, King over all.